Many of you may recognise Bishop Heyermund from the popular television series Vikings, where he is depicted as a complex character. He loved God and was devoted to him, but he also loved the sins of this mortal world. The tale of the real Heyermund is veiled in the midst of time, and there isn't a lot of information on the man. However, in this video we will explore who he could have been, and the mention of him in the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle. While the notion of a bishop or holy man wielding a sword or mace may strike us as unusual today, history offers a fascinating perspective. Throughout the ages, there have been numerous instances of armed priests who took on the dual role of a spiritual leader and a warrior. This phenomenon is particularly evident in the epochs of antiquity and the Middle Ages, as well as among various historical tribes. The term warrior priests conjures images of men of faith who stepped beyond the confines of the church, donning armour and taking up arms to defend their beliefs, communities and territories. In Heyman's case, he would have been defending his territory from the threat of the great heathen army, who were responsible for the most terrifying and bloody invasion of the age. Bishop Heyermund himself served as the Bishop of Sherborne, which was a market town situated in the picturesque landscape of southwest England. This town fell under the jurisdiction of the Kingdom of Wessex, in an era marked by political strife and territorial disputes. Heyman's position would have made him acutely aware of the implications and events unfolding within the kingdom. The challenges faced by Wessex would shape the destiny of the realm and Heyman's life. Bishop Heyman lived through one of the most cataclysmic invasions in the history of Britain, the arrival of the Great Heathen Army. This formidable force descended upon the land after the tragic demise of Ragnar Lothbrok in the year 865, a man whose legend echoed through the ages, slain by King Ella of Northumbria. The Ragnarsons, who were Ragnar's sons, would demand revenge. Their initial mission was to bring a swift retribution to King Ella, and this dark task was executed with ruthless efficiency. 400 longships sailed to Britain, and the pagan army quickly subdued Northumbria, culminating in the infamous Blood Eagle, a grisly sacrifice to the Norse gods that sent shivers through the hearts of their enemies. As the brothers Ivar, Haft and Anubba unleashed their fury upon the English shores, they carved a path of devastation that would garner them a reputation for a thousand years while Sigurd and Bjorn returned to their own kingdoms, Ivar, Haft and Anubba pressed onwards, laying waste to the land and solidifying their grip on Northumbria. In their cunning, they installed a puppet king, a mere shadow of authority meant to extract taxes and resources to fuel their relentless campaigns of conquest. Ivar the Boneless, a figure both feared and revered, later steered the great heathen army towards the fertile lands of East Anglia. Here, they clashed with the Saxon warriors, whose valiant efforts were tragically in vain, against the overwhelming might of the invaders. Their king, Edmund, met a fate both harrowing and noble. He was mercilessly filled with javelins, and ultimately beheaded for his unwavering faith in God. His refusal to denounce his beliefs and serve Ivar as a puppet king only solidified his legacy as a martyr, his courage casting a long shadow over the land. By this time, the Ragnarsons and the Great Heathen Army had claimed dominion over two of the four great kingdoms of England, their ambitions insatiable. With their sights set on Mercia, they occupied the city of Reading in the year 870, a strategic stronghold that further solidified their power in the region. As the tide of war surged, Ivar the Boneless took a portion of the Great Heathen Army northward, venturing into the wild and untamed lands of Ireland and Scotland, 
seeking new conquests and glories. Meanwhile, Halfdan and Ubba remained in the south, intensifying their campaigns against Mercia and Wessex. Thus, the Great Heathen Army continued its relentless march, a storm of steel and fury, reshaping the very landscape of Britain and leaving a mark upon its history. Haymond was consecrated as a bishop in the year 867 or 868, rising to prominence. His influence extended over the regions of Devon, Somerset and Dorset. Haymond was also no ordinary cleric. He embodied the duality of a holy man and a warrior that rendered him a pivotal figure in a time fraught with peril. In an age when the very fabric of society was woven with the threads of conflict and uncertainty, warrior bishops like Haymond played a crucial role in the shaping of destiny. They were not merely spiritual guides, but also advisors to kings and local rulers, their counsel deeply sought in matters of governance and warfare. As the shadows of the great heathen army loomed over England, the very tenets of Christianity and sanctity of the church were placed in jeopardy. The invading Danes and Northmen, devoted to their Norse paganism and the worship of the ancient gods, posed a profound challenge to the Christian faith. During this turbulent time, the King of Wessex was Ethelred I, a ruler faced with the daunting task of uniting his people against a restless foe. By the end of the year 870, the resolve of Wessex hardened, and the time for decisive action had come. Ethelred, inspired perhaps by the Council of Haymond, and bolstered by the loyalty of his warriors, launched a full-scale attack on the Great Heathen Army. This was a moment of reckoning, a clash between the old ways and the new, where the fate of kingdoms hung in the balance. As the Great Heathen Army, led by the formidable Halfdan and Ubba Ragnarsson, swept through the lands of East Anglia and Northumbria, they amassed not only vast treasures of silver, but also an unparalleled reputation that struck terror into the hearts of many. Their conquests marked the dawn of a new era of Viking dominance, casting a long shadow over the Anglo-Saxon kingdoms. Yet amid this tempest of pagan ferocity, King Ethelred of Wessex stood resolute, vowing to resist the tide of invaders with all the strength he could muster. Ethelred was joined by his brother Alfred, who would later be immortalised in history as Alfred the Great, alongside several noble eldermen, each a defender of their land. Together, they prepared to engage the Vikings in a series of fierce confrontations, determined to defend their homeland and the sanctity of their faith. The precise role of Bishop Haymond in these monumental clashes remains shrouded in mystery. While it is uncertain whether he was present at each skirmish and battle, the tales of valiant encounters such as the Battle of Reading and the Battle of Ashdown echo through the annals of time as pivotal moments in this epic struggle. Both battles, dramatic in their own right, pitted the might of Wessex against the fierce warriors of Halfdan Ragnarsson and other Viking kings and earls who sought to carve out their dominion over the land. These confrontations were not mere skirmishes, they were titanic struggles between two cultures, each fighting for survival and supremacy. Yet many of these battles proved inconclusive, with no clear victor emerging from the blood-soaked fields. Halfdan, Ethelred and Alfred all departed the battlegrounds alive, each side grappling with the toll of war and the uncertainty of the future. However, at the fateful Battle of Merton, the annals of history captured a moment profound and significant. The Anglo-Saxon Chronicle recounts the events with the weight that underscores Haymond's importance. King Ethelred and his brother Alfred engaged the army at Basing, where the Vikings claimed a victory. Two months hence, King Ethelred and his brother Alfred faced the enemy once more at Merton, divided into two forces, and they put the Danes to flight, 
achieving a hard-won triumph that stretched deep into the day. Yet the clash was costly, with great slaughter on both sides, and the Danes ultimately had possession of the battlefield. In that desperate struggle, Bishop Heyermund fell alongside many noble warriors. Following this battle, a vast summer army descended upon Reading, and shortly thereafter, King Ethelred passed away at Easter. In this passage, Heyermund emerges not merely as a cleric, but as a fierce warrior who embraced his dual calling with valour and conviction. His presence on the battlefield symbolised the unity of faith and martial duty. The Anglo-Saxon Chronicle's acknowledgement of Heyermund's death signifies the profound loss suffered by the Anglo-Saxon cause. Heyman's sacrifice at Merton underscored the gravity of the conflict, where the stakes were not just for land and power, but for the very survival of the Anglo-Saxon way of life, which was being threatened by the pagan invaders. Although much knowledge has been lost about Heyman's life, he was revered and venerated as a saint in both the Eastern Orthodox Church and the Roman Catholic Church after his passing. This recognition attests to his significant stature during his lifetime, suggesting that his demise struck a grievous blow to the Anglo-Saxon cause against the encroaching Vikings. This holy warrior was celebrated not only for his fierce valour in the thaws of battle, but also for his unwavering piety, leaving behind a legacy that echoed through the ages. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to like, subscribe and share, and I'll see you all soon for another History Profile.